church on our 15th Sunday after the Pentecost. If you please stand for the invocation. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives our trespasses by nailing them to the cross, who by grace upon grace assures us of salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord God, merciful judge, you are the inexhaustible fountain of forgiveness. Replace our hearts of stone with hearts that love and adore you, that we may delight in doing your will. For Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading this morning comes from Genesis, the 50th chapter. After Jacob's death, the brothers of Joseph begged for forgiveness for the crime they had done against him. You intended to do me harm, Joseph said. But God used this as an opportunity to do good and save many lives. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's father said, What if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph, saying, Your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. 
Now, therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him, and said, We are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for the good in order to preserve a numerous people, as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. Word of God, word of love. We will read Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord of my soul and forget not all God's benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from the grave and crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's. O Lord, you provide vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. You make known your ways to Moses and your works to the children of Israel. Lord, you are full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. You will not always accuse us, nor will you keep your anger forever. You have not dealt with us according to our sins, nor repaid us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is your steadfast love for those who fear you. As far as the east is from the west, so far have you removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion for his children, so you have compassion for those who fear you, O Lord. The second reading this morning comes from the book of Romans. This Christian community has significant struggles with adversity. Here, Paul helps us understand that despite different practices in worship and personal piety, we do not judge one another. All Christians belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, who died for all of us and will judge each of us. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak only vegetables. Those who, eat, those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe, observe it in the honor of the Lord. Also those who eat, eat in the honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God. While those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister for you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, each of us will be accountable to God. Word of God, word of life. to me. 
Matthew. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sin against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times, Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 70 times, seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owned him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who won him a hundred denarii, and seized him by the throat. He said, pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. Then his fellow slaves saw what happened, and they were greatly distressed. And they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, Yo, wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you plead with me. Should you not have mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. I don't know how many of you remember, but today should have been rally day. First Sunday after Labor Day. If things have gone as planned for this community of faith, perhaps we would be releasing, starting, launching, our fall stewardship campaign. So this, this is a rally day very different than any other. We have been gone through what be perhaps forever know, the summer of dread. The virus, the racial tensions, and the political radicalism who will surely torment us all the way in past November. Which is not too political. I think it's okay for us to be political and to stand for what we believe. It's what's called politicism. We 
which is a form of idolatry when we worship our political views more than we worship God, but that's another sin. So I suspect the dread will continue. For about six months, I suspect, right now there is not a single person sitting here, watching at home, or all over the nation, or perhaps, of, perhaps all over the country, who does not, or the globe, who does not feel that in some shape or form that person has been sinned against. Our elected leaders misled and lied to us. Our freedoms to come and go and to strive were taken away from us for enemies that we cannot see and that we don't understand. People of color on this country have cried out, my life matters too. The white privileged part of this country has cried out, I'm not racist. If you're a progressive person, you have been called all kinds of names if you proclaim your convictions. If you are a conservative person, you have called all kind you have been called all kinds of names if you proclaim your convictions. Sin against one another and sin in our communities and in our communities of faith have been abound this summer. We are frustrated, we are angry, we are depressed. We are more than ever intolerant with one another. Our patience is lacking, our compassion is lacking. I was reading the Chicago Tribune today that despite of the eviction moratorium that are happening all over the country in most states. Because guess what? People losing jobs and not be able to pay their bills. Or maybe because we just need all of us striving for a little grace, for mercy, regardless of that evictions and people being locked down of their places are to the roof. There is no other image of how anger and intolerance and unforgiven we have become to each other through all that dread than to lock someone out or to evict someone of the place of living when, when all of us are hurting. So there have been sins abound big and small for this summer. Thank goodness Matthew is moving us from sin, which we approached last Sunday, and our first step to find that sin that's brutal and is pervasive and is getting worse in our communities. Last Sunday talk how the first step is to be truthful. Truth will lead us one of the things that's going to lead us to reconciliation. 
Matthew today presents us with another, if not the most important, step. Moving from struggle and death, from vitality and, and life and hope, which is forgiveness. How many times should we forgive is the question that stays in our head. And we take to figure out, uh, we tend to think that the math in the Bible is exact and is not usually when numbers are expressed in such a way. There's a lot of hyperbole and there is a, uh, 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 it's not an exact message, that is an abstract message that is conveyed. So perhaps the best question that Peter could have asked and that we could do to is not how, much, not how many times we should forgive, but how many weights our forgiveness carries. Do we have an idea what 10,000 talents would mean in that, at that time? It was the whole text of Palestine over one Today, money probably tens of tens of tens of millions. That's how much the weight and the amount and the burden of the sin of that first servant. It's unpayable. By his own powers, it's unpayable. He begs for mercy. The master grants. No questions asked. See, Jesus is doing this metaphor for the kingdom of God and what happens in the kingdom of God that Jesus conquered for us. Remember that all the sins of humankind does not be able to be paid for any one of us through the centuries, centuries and centuries and centuries and thousands and thousands of years. Either better than anybody else. So we didn't ask for that forgiveness. <coughs> Yet God did. For our eternity. For everyone who is brought to the font, seal of the Holy Spirit, marked with the cross of Christ. And there is the amount, is the weight of the mercy that God expects from us. The 
the sin of communities of faith. And we like to call ourselves a Christian country, so we are one big faith community in Christ. The sin of a community is surrendered to the forces or to the temptation to walk away, to not to forgive, to demand repayment, to demand to be repaired. have sin against me or against someone, you have to pay. Sometimes with your life. Even if God has no pleasure in the death of anyone, that's going to come later. Oh, the temptation is around this summer. We want so much to walk away. We want so much to stay away. I don't want to talk to so-and-so anymore. I don't want to see so-and-so anymore. That's sinful behavior. God wants us to stay together. What God puts together, nobody should separate. God brought every single one of us to our faith community. And God hopes that we stay together. If we surrender to anger too quickly, or to be avenged too quickly, or for the eye for an eye and two for a two, and somebody needs to repay us because they did wrong, we're going to stay apart. And that sinful behavior. Community restoration or forgiveness doesn't matter if our church, doesn't matter if our town, doesn't matter if our sinner, state, country. If we claim ourselves to be one nation under God, and by therefore in Jesus Christ, if we want to be true to that ideal, we strive for forgiveness by staying in relationship. We don't condemn each other. We don't punish each other. We don't walk away from each other. We try to become a little less selfish and juvenile. A little more enlightened and behaving as adults and seeking the common good of our community. We stay in relationship. See, the forgiveness is not something that you just, okay, now I forgive you. Most of the time, that's not how it works. Some things are much tougher to forgive than others. You can forgive someone right away for have bumped you or caused you to take a fall accidentally. Yeah, that's easy to forgive. If someone injures you physically or emotionally, someone humiliates you, someone shames you, that's a little tough. Takes time, work, staying in relationship is not easy. Condemn is easy. To sin is easy. It's the path of lack of courage. Sometimes you have this false bravado, right? I'm never going to talk to you anymore. I'm 
sorry, you don't have enough courage to work in a relationship that God wants you to do. That's why I call false bravado. There's no courage into that. Courage is to say, I'm sorry. Courage is to say, please forgive me. Courage in Christ is to work for reconciliation, regardless of the enmity that we develop against each other. That's courage. That's guts. That's Christian grit. To do otherwise is too easy. summer of dread, and I'm going 21 minutes, and I'm sorry, but I pray this is a pivotal sermon for many of our communities of faith at this point, not just for us. During the summer of dread, many times, ask myself, what's the point? Which is almost equal like don't have enough courage and may, it, it's a symptom that faith is hurting. And I don't know who prayed for me. I suspect someone did multiple times, I guess. Because every time of the handful of times that I was pretty much decided to call it quits, what's the point? I wake up the next day reminded that it doesn't need to be that way. None of us needs to go away for real. Why? To massage our own pride? Or to massage the pride of someone else? Every time two or three of you are together, I'm there with you. None of us need to go away. Christ has our back. None of us needs to go away. No community of faith needs to call it quits. None of us need to die. It's not written in stone. Quite the opposite. See, God allows and asks us to forgive one another and to work towards reconciliation. There's no shame into that. There's no need for vindication. God said, that's okay, you can do that. It's fine. So some people, they may tell us, no, you have to vindicate or you have to avenge or you defend your honor or whatever there is. You don't have a spine. Whatever. Who saved you? Who extend the ultimate mercy to you? It was that person or was the Lord your God? Why allegiance to anything else? Than, the, than to the one who has extend mercy over things that we cannot repay before we ask. I'm sorry, it's not worth it. Nothing else is worth it. 
Zambiraj is an illusion, is a figure of our imagination, is a stumbling block staying in the way of Christ. Because that forces, wants us to go away, wants to, us to stay separate, wants us to die. But here's the thing, God in Jesus Christ is more powerful than that because every time that we think about walk, God binds us by the cross. Over and over and over again. Communities of faith have been through worse. We still have resources. Who is still capable to be patient and forgiven and have empathy and be tolerant with each other, to have mercy, to be slow to anger, to not surrender to fear. Because we belong to Christ. We can't help it, we can't undo it. The mark of the cross is forever. And it's enough to feed our faith, to empower us, to give us true courage. A courage that insists in not staying apart. A courage that calls us, yes, to leave the past behind, to reconcile, and to strive for renewal. It's possible for truth, for forgiveness, and for gathering in honor.
Please stand as, it as we profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Draw together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. You welcome us when we are weak in faith. Uphold your church throughout the world. Make it a place of welcome. Strengthen faith through Bible studies on Sunday schools, confirmation classes, and youth ministries. Nurture new ministries of education and growth. Lord, in your mercy. The heights of the heavens show us the vastness of your steadfast love. Have compassion on your creation. Where human selfishness has brought ruin and destruction, we look to you to heal, renew, and redeem your word. Lord, in your mercy. Make your ways known to the nations. Speak kindness to our bitter grudges. Settle our hearts when we want to settle accounts with violence. Bless our leaders with patience and wisdom. Today we pray especially for Lillian, Jill, Carol, Ron, Jim, Garris, Dan, Brandon, Dale, Herb, Tyler, Oren, Riley, Rodney, Charlie, Larry, Kendall, Don, Red, Zach, Doris, Chris, Cindy, Cindy, Bailey, Missy, AJ, B in Art, Carrie, Jamie, and Becky. Lord, in your mercy, bring healing and injustice wherever harm is dealt. Provide vindication for all who are oppressed. Free victims of human trafficking and forced labor. Deliver all who are bound by debt. Feed all who hunger. And guard refugees fleeing famine, poverty, and war. Lord, in your mercy. Teach us to forgive. Remind us that you do not always accuse us. Steal our tongues when we attempt to pass judgment and argue over opinions. Make this congregation a community of mercy for one another and for all our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. People of God, you are invited now to offer your own prayers.
die and we are yours. We thank you for those who have faithfulness, for the knees that taught us how to bow to you and the tongues that taught us to praise you. Lord, in your mercy, all these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Christ be with you always. stand if you are able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you. Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join the unending claim. <laughs>
please stand if you are able. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. We belong to him. The God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another. The God of hope fill with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The God of all grace bless you now and forever. We're going to do the first two verses. Sure. We'll skip the third verse, though. Christ is with you. 